When the nation is rocked by disasters like the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center, the attack on the Pentagon, or anthrax contamination on Capitol Hill, members of a largely unrecognized profession are there to help safeguard the public. These men and women are industrial hygienists. They're on the job every day in all types of workplaces, ranging from factories to offices and even the great outdoors. Think of them as workplace detectives. They investigate potential hazards and create solutions to protect the health and safety of workers and the public. Hi, I'm Jennifer Sommel. I'm an industrial hygienist with the National Park Service, and I'm proud to be a member of the profession. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what we do. In the workplace, we anticipate, recognize, evaluate, and control environmental factors that might cause health and safety problems. We communicate with management and workers every day to make sure that everyone is safe and productive. In my job, I sometimes test for environmental hazards that might endanger Park Service workers. Other industrial hygienists might use their scientific knowledge to conduct mold assessments or tackle dangerous jobs like directing the cleanup of asbestos. We even protect the public from the hazards posed by illegal methamphetamine labs. Meth labs are a toxic brew of chemicals, and proper cleanup and testing of former meth lab sites is critical. In these and many other ways, my colleagues and I are dedicated to protecting the health of people in the community. We think of our work as a noble profession. One colleague, Richard Bennett, calls it a socially redeeming profession. We have a direct impact on human health and on individuals' uh, health and well-being and sometimes life and death situations. Life and death situations are reality for many industrial hygienists like Army Major Anthony Intrepido. He responded to the attacks on the Pentagon and anthrax in congressional offices. We were getting second-hand information that the anthrax could be more sophisticated than what we thought was advertised at the time. And so we did, I, I decided to take the team I was with to go into the to the senator's suite where the letter was actually opened and do some kind of uh, research there to see if this, this anthrax that was now laying on the surfaces, that if it could be re aerosolized. When terrorists struck the World Trade Center, Coast Guard Commander and Industrial Hygienist Meredith Austin responded to protect the health and safety of rescue and recovery workers. Safety, and so it was important for the safety health professionals that were on scene to do that for them, to look around to see what hazards were out there, the way of there were the noise hazards or there were physical hazards or chemical hazards there, and to, to take a look at that and make sure that those hazards were controlled for as best as possible. Industrial hygienist Jack Springston was also at Ground Zero to ensure that the people who returned to work in nearby buildings were not at risk. It was mayhem, a lot of fear. Uh, there was fear of, of additional buildings falling down. Most of our work doesn't make the headlines, but one thing is certain. The work is exciting. The thing I love most about industrial hygiene is the broad variety of the work we do and the great people we work with. It's really about helping people. John Henshaw is an industrial hygienist who is the former head of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Uh, I, I don't know of any other uh, profession that can, get, that can provide the excitement and the technical um, exhilaration of learning more and more and more all the time, as well as, which is the bottom line, is doing good for people. Uh, really no other profession in my mind that can do that. So uh, industrial hygiene is the ideal for those who really want to make a difference. No day is ever the same, and so I really love what I do, and I think it's, it's something that's beneficial. If you like science, you like a little bit of math, and you like people, it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to kind of do different things. It is an exciting uh, position uh, at Disney. Um, I do mostly all the monitoring at the resort, um, including noise monitoring, um, air monitoring, and data management. When I first went to school, I don't think I realized the amount of gratification I would get from walking into a workplace and identifying hazards that the employer and or the employee were not aware of and having those hazards corrected fairly immediately. Industrial hygienists don't just work with chemicals, don't just work with radiation. You know, there's, there's so many things now that we're getting into emergency response and new technologies like nanotechnology and things like that. Students entering the profession relish those opportunities. 
that it's an exciting career that allows you through as you mature as an industrial hygienist you can face new issues and involve yourself in new challenges which I think is really great. Every day there's a new adventure and if you like adventure and you like problem solving then industrial hygiene is what you need. Well I love industrial hygiene because it's so diverse I mean it's not so monotonous like other jobs you can do a different thing every day you I mean if you're interested in noise if you're interested in airborne exposures or if you're interested in in heat stress analysis there's just a wide variety of um, topics that you could become an expert in aspiring industrial hygienists tell us they have a passion for the profession I think my passion comes because I truly care about workers and those in the community. And I think that if you have the passion, then you can go ahead and go into the field. I'm truly passionate about health and safety, and I've always had an interest in health and safety. So, so for industrial hygiene, for me, it's truly connecting with the people that I'm working for, you know, the workers. No matter what it is in academia, whether it's publishing papers or doing research, or if you're an industrial hygienist in a, at a facility, it doesn't matter. It's always at the core for me and for this field about people and protecting people. This next generation of industrial hygienists already has dreams and goals. Lisa Brown is a single mother of three. I would like to do some research into seeing um, how the family is affected by occupational exposures and also how occupational stress of a working female affects the family life. For students, the annual American Industrial Hygiene Conference and Exposition is a wellspring of knowledge about the profession. Here, students converge from many colleges, recruiters are on hand, mock interviews are conducted, and experienced industrial hygienists offer advice on how to find a job to begin their careers. single characteristic that I might suggest is a student needs to be curious. Interpersonal skills is very important for industrial hygienists. Uh, working to make sure that the workers understand that they need to work in a safe environment, a healthy environment. For students and members, the exposition floor is crowded with the latest, most sophisticated technology used by the profession. Our technology transition is accelerating at a rate unprecedented in our profession. So coming to the show and seeing that new technology and how it can be applied uh, to what we do as industrial hygienists is extraordinarily important. At the conference, students also learn details about scholarships available from the American Industrial Hygiene Foundation and NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. There is no substitute for hands-on experience and many internships are available. How much money do industrial hygienists make? Salaries vary, but most graduates from graduate level industrial hygiene programs command starting salaries of at least $40,000, with many starting higher. Many people go on to become certified industrial hygienists or to earn other certifications available in the field of occupational health and safety. This training prepares industrial hygienists for higher level positions and greater earning power, including salaries over $100,000. Our students are certainly finding jobs. Uh, undergraduate level, uh, we're providing solid science-based training, and uh, the jobs are out there. We've not had a student uh, not have a job before they graduated. So I tell them that the market is out there for uh, young people coming into the profession, that uh, we're placing students in a very broad range of, uh, of jobs, private industry, government, uh, academia. Um, and uh, they're, they're, the, the types of work that they're doing is also very, uh, very broad range. So, and then they're making good salaries. With this graying of the profession, we're going to have a lot of people retiring in the very near future. So this is one of the best opportunities that students have, or students have had in 30 years to get into this profession. And I think maybe one of the uh, more exciting things that students may want to look at is that there's tremendous opportunity with globalization. Many of these countries, many of the companies now are, are sending a lot of their manufacturing overseas and they still need industrial hygiene. I actually have a job offer already and the position I've been offered is a health study at Northwestern University, Department of Preventive Medicine. It's often said that there are no guarantees in life. But John Henshaw offers a guarantee to students who are committed to making industrial hygiene a career, not just a job. And if they do that, 
if they make that commitment to themselves, I can guarantee them, as long as they continuously learn and work hard and, and, and have fun at the same time, because you do have fun at the same time, that you will be rewarded. For me, and for many of my colleagues, one of the best rewards is making a real difference in the world. Nothing is more precious than life and health, and we guard the health and safety of workers and the public every day. When we find and fix the cause of a health problem, or prevent a problem from occurring in the first place, that's what it's all about. To learn more about this challenging and rewarding profession, contact the American Industrial Hygiene Association at 703-849-8888 or go to the website at www.aiha.org. You may also send questions by email to infonet at aiha.org.